Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you are not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Before I get into the video, I wanted to remind you guys, if someone reaches out to you trying to sell you a service, that is someone pretending to be me, please don't fall for it. If you're looking to get your natal chart read, the link is in the description box below. I would never reach out to you and try to solicit you and sell you anything. The first thing that I would like for you to know about this new moon is that this is a partial solar eclipse. And a solar eclipse is when the sun, the moon, and the earth is in perfect alignment. They're like basically lined up exact. But for a partial, that means that they're not lined up exact. So that means that the, the moon doesn't completely block out the light, the light of the sun. So because it's partial, that means that there will be a glimpse of light of the sun still reflecting onto the moon. So when it comes to the partial solar eclipse, I think of the earth being you know, the the nurturer, the stability, the foundation, home. I think of the sun as our identity, who we identify as. And I think of the moon being how we nurture ourselves. And also too, it's like a gateway or a portal to other dimensions that we can access within. So even though the moon appears to be on the outside, it is almost like a doorway within because it reflects our emotions. And depending on where the moon is and how the moon is, you know, how close the moon is and things like that, the gravitational pull from the moon, you know, affects the fluids on earth, it affects, it affects the tides in the ocean and we are made up of fluids. So it affects the fluids within us based on the magnetic pull, you know? So when it comes to this partial solar eclipse, I think about how the moon partially blocks out the light of the sun. So to me, that brings my attention to the fact that, you know, this is an opportunity for us to reflect on, you know, our emotional being, reflect on our energetic being, reflect on ourselves in a way that isn't so, like, how would I put it? Isn't so rooted in society and the way society says that we should conduct ourselves, live our lives and things like that. Because with the sun being in Taurus and me thinking about like Uranus being in Taurus, and the North Node also being in Taurus, and at some point all of that <clears throat> conjuncting, I think of changes that are happening, and you keep hearing that word change. And though change could be scary, change is the best thing that can happen to us because it gets rid of the old and allow fresh and new experiences to happen, and we are here to have experiences. So without change, we would be stagnant and somewhat feel like prisoners because, you know, it's like stuck, frozen, nothing is happening. The second thing that I wanted you to know about this new moon is that this is the second new moon that we're having in one month. So we started out the month having the new moon in Aries at the beginning of the month. And in the middle of the month, we had the full moon in Libra. And now at the end of the month, we're having a new moon in Taurus. And, you know, all this excitement and magic happening in one month to me is, is perfect. It's divine order, divine timing for the simple fact that April... April reflects the beginning of a new astrological year. But for me, 
numerologically because April adds up and April 2022 adds up and reduces to the number one vibration. The number one represents the beginning. So with all of those things in line, meaning that April is the beginning of an astrological new year and April 2020, April 2022 adds up and reduces to the number one vibration. All of that tells me that like, yes, this is like major beginnings for a lot of us, major beginnings for all of us for the most part, because, you know, a beginning is an ending and an ending is a beginning. It's like a circle. It's all connected. And for some of us, we get to take advantage and take charge by choosing to move ourselves. And for some of us, life will move us. But regardless of whatever is happening, we are always on the right path because the path that we're on is in perfect alignment with the experience that we need to have within that moment. And whenever we are satiated, whenever we have learned enough, then we will move on to the next level. So I think of how we started off the month with the new moon in Aries and that bringing um, um, reflection to a new beginning when it comes to us as the I am, how we show up, our ambition, our motivations and things like that. And I look at, you know, the full moon in Libra and in order for us to stand in our new truth. So say, for example, we are reinventing ourselves. We've come to the realization that I am ready to stand tall and who I am. And I know this is who I am based on how it feels to me. Like I'm trusting my heart and if you haven't seen that video that I made titled, I'm Afraid to Trust Myself, check that out because in that video, I go into how and why we are afraid to trust our hearts, how we can start trusting ourselves and why it is important for us to trust ourselves. So yes, we step into our truth and what feels right to us. So what comes next is an ending in relationships or how we relate to things because in order for us to truly stand in our truth, and truly move forward with this new invention of ourselves or not even invention, this new acceptance of ourselves. Because I always remind myself that I don't never need to find myself and you need to remind yourself of that also. You never need to find yourself. It is a matter of accepting yourself. And sometimes it is so hard for us to accept ourselves because we've been so conditioned based on the stories we've been told and how society has marketed to us, marketed to our parents also, to where they have been conditioned to think that life should be a certain way. And then they also, you know, out of love, push us and sometimes the push can look different depending on who's doing the pushing you know to live our lives and conduct ourselves a certain way not because they know from personal experience but because it has been marketed and sold to them in a way that touch their emotions and create so much fear to where they're trying to protect you from that fear so in return somewhat try to control your life out of love and this is where I always remind myself, it is never okay for me to allow others to live twice through me. This is my life, this is my experience, and this is my opportunity to, you know, be in this moment. You know, this is my opportunity to surrender and feel everything that each moment has to give. So depending on what my heart says and what feels right to me in this moment, this might feel right, but in the next moment, if it doesn't, I'm going to allow myself to flow into what does. So yeah, with the full moon and Libra, that may cause some of us to have to walk away from the way we related to things in order for us to stand truth in our being. And sometimes relationships are some of the things that we walked away from. So now we come into the new moon in Taurus. And when we think about Taurus energy, you know, stability, foundation, in order for us to truly stand in our truth, we have to secure the foundation that we're going to build up on in order to basically build the physical version of what we've already envisioned within ourselves. So the third thing that I would like to share with you when it comes to this new moon is that the sun and the moon are at 10 degrees. And the number 10 vibration makes me think of the freshman who has evolved to the highest level but back at the bottom again because in numerology like the number one represents the beginning and we go into the cycle of the number one being the beginning and the father energy the number two being nurturing mothering energy and us putting an idea which is number one into motion and then giving birth to the 
number three, which is the child, the creative self-expression of, you know, the idea that was nurtured and then given birth to. So we can go down all the numbers and each number show how relevant each number are in the process of us taking an idea and manifesting it into physical reality, which shows how as humans, we need each other, you know? So that's one thing that I've learned when it comes to my spiritual journey how there are stages, seasons, and cycles within our lives and how important it is for us to rest in each moment and be at peace in each moment and learn everything we can from each season. Because for me, there were times when I needed to step away from everything and everyone who I was used to because basically at that time in my life, like I didn't know how to set healthy boundaries. I didn't know what was important to me or who I was because I was so accustomed to pleasing everybody so that they would accept me. And once I become became clear about who I am and what is important to me and how to set healthy boundaries, then I was able to introduce myself back into the world because now I was able to, you know, have balanced relationships, have reciprocity in my connections, opposed to things always being one sided, me feeling overwhelmed and then having to ghost a person, a place or a situation because I've allowed them to have expectations of me. So with the 10 degree sun and moon, creating the new moon basically when we get to the number nine of the cycle the number nine talks about endings but at the same time beginnings the number nine talks about us gathering everything we've learned from our past experiences so think about school and you're in moving into the 12th grade the number nine energy is like 11th grade end of 11th grade year you know where you're getting ready to be a senior so you reflect back on all the courses you've take all the homework you've turned in your attendance all of that and based on how you've performed through the years will determine where you land in the next level but when you get to 12th grade or whatever you appear to be that at the top of the game you know you, you appear to be you know ahead of everyone else but if you keep learning if you keep going if you keep growing then you're going to move to the next level of your life that might be in a career path or that might be college but either way now you're back at the beginning again you're at a place where something is fairly new to you and even though you can tap into what you've learned before you're still in a new space you're still in a new place so this is where we're super vulnerable and trust me being the freshman is something that i've experienced so many times in my life it's like it feels like you're the worst you're the weakest freaking link in the sense that for me living in Massachusetts and growing up in my hometown where everybody knows I could do hair and you know I have my clientele and I feel like a big fish in a small town or whatever and then moving to Florida which is a way bigger space and no one knowing that I can do hair and having to start from scratch like I remember one time when the owner of the salon that I was building my clientele in told a girl to come and sit in my chair and I could literally see her eyes fill up with tears because she was so afraid of giving me a chance. And I've had so many experiences like that. But after you've done it once, you remember how it felt. So based on that memory, you can remind yourself to just be patient in this moment and know that your time will come. So it is important for you to be patient in this moment in your life and reflect on the last time when it felt how it feels to start something new and know that that too shall pass and always pass but never try to escape the moment just ref just rest in it float in it relax in it because there's things that you can learn from the opportunity of that moment and if you try to escape it you will miss out the fourth thing that I would like to share with you when it comes to this new moon in Taurus is that if you increase your self-worth, your net worth will increase also. So Taurus energy talks about foundation. It talks about stability. It talks about our values. And our values are so important because a lot of the times we value things that don't value us. So whenever our values are placed in the wrong 
place, this is where we can be attracted to people, places, or things that basically is destructive to us. So it is important for us to be clear about the things that we value and be honest with ourselves and take a look at how the things that we value have been, you know, the fruits that the things we value have been producing in our lives. Like say, for example, for me, I used to reward myself with going out to eat after I've accomplished something. After I felt accomplished, I would reward myself with food. But at the time, I wasn't paying attention to how that could be so destructive for me where it's like it would be my excuse to escape and consume things that would then leave me feeling exhausted, then affect my blood sugar levels and throw my body off and create issues. So as often as I would have a reason to celebrate, I would so often like basically be destroying my health. So after a while that slowed down my ability to produce so I wasn't having much of a reason to celebrate, but I was still, you know, going into those going into those habits because it was a way of escaping. So pay attention to, you know, the things that you value and do the things that you value, value you. Do the things that you value produce value in your life. And you can tell by looking around at your life and seeing how much value do those things actually produce. And when it comes to our self-worth, it's like, how deserving are you? Of course, we're worthy and deserving just for the simple fact that we are alive and we are existing. Every person, even the criminal, you know, that we might consider criminal in prison doing forever time for the simple fact that the creator chose for them to be alive right now. That means that they are deserving of the air that they're breathing. So it is important for us to know that we are deserving of the air that we're breathing. And for the simple fact that we're deserving of the air that we're breathing, we're deserving and worthy of all things that is present, all things that is around, but it is our worth and how much we see ourselves as not being worthy enough or deserving that blocks those opportunities from coming into our lives. Because, you know, the way how we, it's like, imagine at the time of birth, you were born tuned into a certain station and the station you were tuned into was aligned with the channel that bring through all things. But at your time of birth, you were way too small to even want or desire things. But as you started growing, this is your channel. This is the channel of abundance and frequency based on the conditioning, the programming and the marketing. You be, you grew further and further and further away from tuning into that frequency that channeled in and brought in all things. So basically it's our, it is important for us to find our way back to that frequency and we find our way back to that frequency by finding our way back to our true worth. You know, the fact that we're worthy and deserving for the simple fact that we exist. The fifth thing that I wanted to talk to you about when it comes to this new moon partial solar eclipse is, you know, things, things are only perceived as bad based on our perspective, based on how we choose to see them. And I say that because at the time of the so, the partial solar eclipse, like there's a grand trine happening. And with the grand trine happening, things feel really good. Like basically we have Jupiter conjunct Venus and Neptune and Pisces. And this is beautifully aspecting Mercury and Gemini and Pluto in Capricorn. So with these three players, a combination of mutable and cardinal energy, and mutable energy is our ability to be flexible. Cardinal energy is our ability to turn the corner quickly, make quick decisions. That's that spark of inspiration that we get, you know, and then the mutable energy is us being able to flex and flow into, you know, flow into the different energies, flow into different the different seasons. And this grand trine is happening in the area of our lives that has to do with our community as far as social media community, our siblings, our family members, how we communicate. It also ties into our legacy responsibility goals and place in the world. And then 
the our subconscious mind how we heal ourselves on a subconscious level on an energetic level how we express ourselves creatively and the time that we need by ourselves in order to recharge so when i look at this flow to me what comes to mind is maybe on a global level or not even global maybe something might happen where some kind of a relief or something is offered to us where you know we are able to feel like there's more freedom as far as because and like an example that comes to mind is say for example those of us who have student loans that we're still paying back and some law is passed or something is granted that allows us some more time to pay back these loans or maybe cut some of it in half or something like that but basically you know taurus energy values finances tangible assets and things like that and this grand shine happening between gemini pisces and capricorn i think about like word communication news information having to do with our responsibilities and our goals and things feeling so much easier or something that was once challenging you know us having a new perspective and based on that new perspective that thing isn't as painful or challenging anymore and the reason why i said things are only as challenging as our perspective the way we choose to see it is whenever we're going through something that's you know painful traumatic whenever we're looking back we always realize that anticipating it is way you know anticipating it makes it worse than it actually is and in the moment of it not seeing what's going to happen next also makes it feel worse than what it actually is but once we're past it we realize like oh my god it wasn't that bad so use this moment as an opportunity to you know create an imprint or a reflection of how it feels whenever things work itself out to to remember whatever things feel challenging whenever things feel stuck you know that opportunities will present themselves things will work themselves out so overall when it comes to this new moon partial solar eclipse in Taurus the message that stood out for me the most I was gonna say what I wanted you to walk away with and I don't think it's fair for me to tell you what to walk away with because we all listen to things and walk away with different things at different times and for me when it comes to certain audiobooks and things that I enjoy I tend to listen to them multiple th times because each time I walk away with something new but for me what I get from this overall energy is I take it back I take it back to the new moon in Aries. And even before the new moon in Aries, I take it back to Pisces season. And when Pisces season, how, you know, I always say that um, basically practicality kills authenticity. And I take it back to Pisces season where if we think about life and how everything goes in circles and a big part of a circle is a straight line, but then there's also a curve. And whenever we're going around the curve of life, this is where, you know, authenticity is important. This is where we have to allow ourselves to tap into the intuition and the guidance within us. But once we've had that inspiring idea, you know, now we have to act on it. It's not about the ideas that we get, but it is our ability to be brave enough to see it through. So once the idea has come, now this is where practicality is important. So with this new moon energy, this is an opportunity for us to reflect and create the proper systems that will help us to follow through with the new beginnings that we started in the beginning of April, the beginning of airy season. You know what I mean? So it's like we took the chance, we, 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 we jumped. So now that we're jumping, we have to strategize our landing while we are jumping in midair. And this is where we have to check in with ourselves to see, okay, this is, I took a chance on this and now we, you know, have the end in mind and then work backwards from the end in mind and create the proper steps that we need to follow in order to make that dream into a reality. So yeah, when it comes to this overall energy, you know, like I mentioned, the sun moon is 
at 10 degrees and the number 10 vibration having to do with being at a newer level but at the bottom again if we're open to growth and evolution we will always be freshmen in life and i love being a freshman in life because being a freshman in life means that new information new knowledge new guidance is always present that means that i'm on a journey that means that i'm on a, a a not necessarily just a mission but i'm on an adventure so being a freshman in life for me means that i'm on an adventure so each step of the way guidance and knowledge comes in to help me along the way it's almost like i'm a character in the mario brothers and you know and on each level i'm discovering something new so the guidance and the knowledge is different things to tell you know help me to make decisions as far as where to go because we have free will to make the decisions that we want but at the same time the guidance is always present so yeah when it comes to this new moon energy you know have the end in mind and create a proper system so that you can create success for yourself because success is a system so create that system for yourself and see it through and of course as we keep moving forward the next full moon will encourage us to let go of something to get us closer to that goal the next new moon will encourage us to bring something on board in order to get us closer to whatever the goal is that you decide for yourself you know first you have to decide and then you know, create that system for yourself and commit to it. So, you know, this was a pleasure sharing my thoughts with you as far as five things that I would like to share with you. I'm sure I shared more than that, but I love sharing with you. If you're interested in hearing more from me, make sure you sign up for my monthly newsletters. They only go out once a month. So depending on when you sign up, you won't get that month's newsletter, but you will be on the list to receive the one for the following cycle. And within these newsletters, they're like, you know, weather reports, but they're astrological weather reports where I briefly list out to you my perspectives or how I perceive the energies and how you can make the most of it. Or it could just be for entertainment purposes. If you're looking to get your natal chart read, the link is in the description box below. If you're still here with me, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know by dropping me a green heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.